Okay, all set. Okay, thank you. Uh, firstly, the, the Premier will be available uh, later on today. She's travelling to Mitchell uh, with the State Disaster Coordinator, Ian Mitchell, uh, Ian uh, Stewart, uh, and will be available for comment uh, at that time. Uh, so at this point, uh, evacuations are continuing out of the township of St George. Um, overnight and into this morning, uh, approximately 2,500 people have vacated the town, uh, principally by bus uh, to the neighbouring centre of Dolby, uh, where they're being housed in at least two evacuation centres, but also by aircraft uh, into Brisbane overnight into the early hours of this morning, uh, where there's 30 or 40 people and more expected uh, throughout the day into the RNA showgrounds. Additional flights have been scheduled for St George today to take the remaining people out. Uh, there is still a contingent, uh, obviously, of police and emergency services personnel in the town. Uh, and particularly um, the message to those people who have left is that the police numbers have tripled in the town uh, to ensure security, uh, particularly of their homes, and that will be the major focus of police uh, in the coming days. Uh, most people, as I've indicated, uh, travelled by bus to Dolby uh, and are settling into evacuation centres there. And we do expect uh, a number of people to be there for uh, many days uh, before they're able to return to their homes in St George. The river at St George um, uh, topped 13.5 metres uh, earlier today. That is in excess of the record set, set in March 2010 uh, of just around 13.4 metres. And the advice from the Bureau today is that it will peak uh, overnight uh, sometime or some level above 14 metres and potentially higher. Uh, so again, we're in uncharted territories here. These are new records never seen before uh, in the St George area. Uh, there have been questions raised about the Beardmore Dam. Uh, the advice we have is that there are no structural issues with the Beardmore Dam. It's behaving uh, as expected and as designed. Uh, the Mooney Highway out of uh, St George uh, closed temporarily uh, last night. It has reopened currently, but we do expect that to close uh, on and off uh, over the coming 24 hours. Uh, currently uh, in St George, there are around 30 homes inundated, uh, or over 30 homes inundated, but we do expect that to rise, obviously, uh, as the waters uh, head towards their peak of at least 14 and possibly higher metres. And uh, currently the airstrip does remain open, so it does uh, allow for those additional evacuations by air to continue uh, early this morning uh, and into early this afternoon. With respect to both Mitchell and Roma, uh, the clean-up uh, is commencing. Uh, however, there are still uh, many homes which will be inaccessible to local residents, so uh, it is expected that uh, many people will remain in evacuation centres uh, for some time. Um, both uh, at Mitchell, uh, two evacuation centres have been set up at the uh, council depot and also at the school. Damage assessments for homes in both Roma and Mitchell have commenced uh, uh, as of the last couple of days. Uh, and preliminary assessments show that uh, in Mitchell, around 250 homes or more, or 280 homes or more, uh, have damage uh, with water above the floorboards. And in Roma, at least over 400. So, very significant damage and, of course, very significant dislocation to those uh, individuals. Uh, so, obviously, a lot of preparation and planning to ensure that those people can be housed uh, and supported in the coming days, particularly in relation to the clean-up, where extra personnel, obviously from Queensland Fire and Rescue, Queensland Police, SES, Rural Fire, uh, will be put, brought into the area to assist with those clean-up operations. Across the region, 16 schools are closed, uh, 12 state, 4 uh, Catholic and non-government, uh, and some childcare centres and TAFE centres. So uh, parents uh, should keep in touch with their local uh, community radio to get further advice on that. With respect to Charleville, uh, the uh, readings this morning on the Warrego River were that it had dropped to around 7.1 metres uh, below the peak. Um, it is expected to remain high for a couple of days, uh, but uh, given that the levee uh, has held well, uh, there is a possibility that many people will be able to return to their homes in Charleville later on today, but that will be dependent on local advice. Um, so with those few words, I might uh, ask if the Commissioner wants to add anything, and then we're happy to answer questions. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you, Minister. Uh, in relation to the Mooney Highway, um, it will open and close uh, for a foreseeable period of time as water flows fluctuate. 
Uh, so we'd ask people not to use the Mooney Highway. If you do have to use the Mooney Highway, then contact your local police for the latest advice. Uh, but that will um, open and close over the next day or so. Uh, in relation to St George, um, we, we understand there's still several hundred people who've chosen to remain in St George. Uh, our request of those folk is to please leave. There is still an opportunity to do that. The airport is still open and we still have flights out of St George and we would much prefer for you to leave. Uh, our planning as well at the moment is focused on those towns that are about to be inundated with floodwaters. Although we're hopeful in respect uh, of both of those towns primarily at the moment, that's Cunnamulla and Durrambandi, uh, that uh, neither of those two centres will be uh, extensively flooded at all and we're hopeful that um, things will be OK for both, but we're monitoring and watching that together with other smaller towns that will experience floodwaters in the next few days very closely. Uh, and finally, I just make the plea again for people uh, driving on any roads um, at all, uh, that, that slogan, if it's flooded, forget it, please do not drive into floodwaters under any circumstances. Uh, that's all I had, and happy to take your questions, as the Minister indicated. Indeed it was tragic, just a terrible thing. Uh, it was a property um, south of St George and uh, I understand the, uh, the child is around 18 months of age. Uh, we're disappointed, we're not surprised. We always expected that there would be some people who would stay. Uh, and whilst the evacuation is mandatory and we do expect that people uh, would leave and hope that they would, the vast majority have, um, our situation though is that um, we can't and won't um, physically um, force people, drag people out of their homes. Uh, that's not viable or practical to do that. But we repeat the request for people to leave uh, we asked you to, um, you know, uh, really, quite frankly, show some um, understanding and some leadership uh, in terms of uh, obeying and complying with the mandatory order. That, that's done for the best of purposes. And one of our concerns is that if this situation deteriorates rapidly, and it might, um, then you could put other people's lives at risk in terms of rescuing and saving you at the 11th hour, and that's really avoidable. What are the numbers there? Yeah, we're doing an audit at the moment to try and determine precisely how many people have chosen to stay in town. We think that that's several hundred. So the population of St George is, is in the vicinity of 3,000, so uh, around 2,500 have, have departed either voluntarily through their own vehicles or through the bus or aircraft that's been provided. Now that's possible and that's why I said earlier that people wanting to use the Mooney Highway and there'd be no better reason than you know for someone leaving St George to do that uh, but to contact the local police in St George before you headed off uh, because it will fluctuate um, and it's quite possible that in a four-wheel drive someone leaving St George could get through to Dolby uh, but they should seek the advice uh, of the local police before they left St George. Any reports of looting in any of the areas yet? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I'm not sure if the Minister has any of this Is there a point at which um, you expect the airstrip will become flooded and there will no longer be flights out? Yeah, if the current predictions um, uh, hold true in terms of the levels, then the airport will go out. Do you know when that will Well, again, on current predictions, that will probably that could happen later tonight or tomorrow. Uh, well, we're not 100% sure. Uh, at this stage, there's only 30 people there. But those people who are being flown out of St George will all be going to the RNA showgrounds. And it will depend on the take up rate of that. Um, and um, certainly, there's no difficulty while the airport remains open in terms of the availability of flights. And we have two more planned for today. So I would expect that um, there will probably be, uh, I would have thought at least maybe 50 to 100 more people coming into the RNA showgrounds later today. There will be additional issues, obviously, further south in Durham Bandy, but at this stage, um, our view is that that should be able to hold with the current levy. 
However, that won't be till later in the week and we'll get more assessments from the Bureau about potential Im impacts downstream. But uh, most certainly there will be a lot of rural properties um, uh, where there will be flooding. Um, so it's not just in the townships themselves. In fact, some of the more significant impact in terms of individuals can be on those uh, remote properties and we're very conscious of that. The success of the levy at Charleville, is that a good lesson um, for the future in other towns? Is, is it possible to, to build levies as good as that uh, at these other towns? Well, I think what we've seen um, uh, not just in Charleville, but indeed in places like Aug Augathella and Durham-Bandy and other places where levies exist, and they've been there for many, many years, uh, 10, 20 or 30 years or longer in some instances, that uh, levies can provide an effective means of protecting townships. Uh, so certainly uh, in Charleville we saw very dramatic footage of uh, the water lapping the top of the levee, uh, but it held, and uh, I think that's a good lesson for all of us. But uh, the lessons of levies have simply been there for some time, uh, and they've been very effective in a number of rural communities for many, many years. St George and Roma seem to have copped it, you know, year after year, now for three, three years or relative in some cases. What, what's the situation there? Is there anything that you can think of that would, you know, prevent the situation happening next year or the year after? Well, I think, again, that's, that's a matter for the experts, the hydrologists, but uh, certainly at St George we've never seen uh, floods at this level, so we're in new territory. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, after every event, uh, decisions and uh, analysis is made as to whether there can be other protective measures put in place. Uh, in some areas it's very difficult. Uh, in some of this territory it's very, very flat land. Uh, for example, places like Bolland, the water just spreads like a floodplain. Uh, so sometimes it's very difficult to provide appropriate protection. But certainly every time there's an event, uh, discussions will take place locally and indeed with state and federal governments about uh, what sort of mitigation uh, measures can be put in place for the future. Uh, the Premier is on her way to Mitchell now uh, with the State Disaster Coordinator, Ian Stewart, uh, and they'll be available for uh, media uh, when they arrive as well. Okay, just by way of additional information in terms of uh, aerial assets that have been deployed into the region, of course we have the commercial providers uh, and the ADF uh, supporting the evacuation out of St George, but uh, in terms of other aerial assets into the general region, uh, we have obviously privately con contracted uh, helicopter providers and uh, uh, aircraft providers. Uh, Emergency Management Queensland have deployed uh, their emergency rescue helicopters into the area. And we also have, uh, for the first time and very significantly, surf life-saving helicopters that have been deployed into that region as well. Uh, we've developed a very good partnership with Surf Lifesaving Queensland uh, and we're very grateful for their resources that have been made available in these western communities as well. Oh, thank okay. you. <coughs> thank thank you, you for your time.